So, just more uh, on hypothesis testing. Okay. Last year, obviously, it was early release for the thing. Please start. It's the inverse. Okay, so on TV shows like American Idol, America's Got Talent, um, contestants often wonder if there's an advantage in performing last. Okay, like you're more recent in their memory, whatever. There's a lot of reasons why you might think they, you know, they saved the votes, whatever. So to investigate, researchers selected a random sample of 600 college students. Important number. And showed each student the audition video of 12 different singers. Each student viewed the videos in random order. Very important word there, random. We would expect one twelfth of the students to prefer the last singer if we assume that order doesn't matter. So in this case, 59 of the 600 students preferred the last singer they viewed. We want to perform a significance a test at level alpha level of 0.05. Again, that's the most common level. If it's not stated, we assume 0.05. So the other day we did have one that was 0.10. Most have said 0.05. We've also had ones that didn't say, and we just assume 0.05. So you always want to assume 0.05 unless you see something else. Step three has already been done for us. In fact, we can write a three right here if you want to. We can rewrite it later, or you can write step three, because step three is to write the ho and the ha. Now, we always do write ho and ha as decimal, so we're going to convert this right now to 0 .083. 0 .083. So the ho is equal to 0 .083, P, and the ha is assuming greater than 0 .083, if the idea that being last is actually Better. So we go to step one. Write small because we got to fill out, especially when we get to step six. So step one, you always say our proportion. So P is equal to the proportion of contestants who believe. Going last is beneficial. Benefit. Again, you know, if you wrote this, contestants who believe it's beneficial to go last, it's better to go last. Going last is better. As long as you get the general gist, I'm not going to grade it on the wording. You just want to get the general gist that we're seeing whether going, their thought of going last is beneficial. Now, we want to state four things in number one. One, P. Two, we want to state what N is. There were 600 people in the sample. We want to say P hat, which is our proportion. So P hat is, I don't know why I put an A there. P hat uh, is 59, yeah, 59 out of 600, which equals 0 0.098. I just writing is not working today. Zero nine eight. There we go. And our last is to state the obvious, which we already know, to make our alpha a 0.05. So those are the four things we put in number one. The proportion and p hat, which is the fraction, and our alpha. We go to step two. Step two is we check three things. Well, two things, one has two parts. Is it random? So we write random question mark. And since it was given to us, we write given check mark. Boom. It was random. They told us it was random. Yay. Now, part two, which has two parts itself, is the test of large numbers. Large numbers. So there's 600, and we're going to take that times P, which is... 0.098, or P hat, sorry, 0 0.098. And we're going to take 600 times 1 minus, which is 0 0.00, no, 902. Point 
nine zero three. One minus p hat. What that gives us is fifty nine and five hundred and forty one rounded. Okay, it's not a perfect depth. Both of these numbers are greater than or equal to 10, so we need to save ourselves time there and put a big check mark. <coughs> we have satisfied the conditions of large numbers. 541. <coughs> so p hat times 600 and p 1 minus p hat times 600 both give us numbers greater than or equal to 10. Therefore, we're good to go. Step three, we already had. If you want to rewrite step three, you could rewrite it right here with the hoe and the hop. It's up to you. I'm going to skip one down to step four. So step three is simply staying the hoe and the hop, which we already had at the top. I would write it as a decimal. If you are rewriting it, work the hard. If you're rewriting it, I would write it as a decimal. Step four is just our math, the formula, Z mm -hmm. equals. We have our P hat. 0 0.098 minus our p, 0 0.083, divided by the square root of 0 0.083 times 0.917, which is 1 minus, all over 600. So if you type this in your calculator, a quick reminder here, in the calculator, so when we do that, um, well, I'll do it again here. So y, not y equals, alpha y equals, here. I'm going to do alpha y equals just to get a fraction. Alpha is not wanting to work today. Alpha, uh, come on, alpha, there you go, y equals. Okay, I'm going to get a fraction. Now I'm just going to type in my point zero nine eight. maybe, point zero nine eight minus, 0.083. Okay, then we just move down. And I can do this all in one fell swoop. I could actually put another fraction in here if I want to under the square root. So second square root. I could actually put another alpha y equals and do 0 0.083, 0 0.917 divided by, but you don't have to, it's all PEMDAS. So 0 0.083 times 0.917 all divided by 600, 100, equals. I get 1.33, okay? So I do 1.33 is my z-score. Like we've been doing since the beginning of the semester, we're gonna to go to our, our uh, blue packet, which has a chart, table A in it, and we're gonna look up 1.33. When we do that, remember, the first column is 1.30, so you actually have to go over four columns to find 1.33. So for step five, we're going to draw real quick, and I'm just going to put one here, two here, mark 1.33 here, mark it, shade it. It does not have to be, you know, exact. It's just getting the general idea that 1.33 is between one and two, and we're shading to the right of it because we did say greater than, all right? So there's that. Uh, we look it up on our table, and we find out it's 0 0.9082, but remember, greater than is to the right, and the table is to the left, so we have to do one minus 0 0.9082, which actually gives us 0 0.0918. Our last step, step six, is to compare 0 0.0918 and 0 0.083. We're comparing our two scores there. And when we do that, finally, for the first time, we have a greater than. For the first time. Okay. Here comes our dissertation. Yep, since my p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If you want to abbreviate, I'm fine with you, just like hypoth hypothesis. 
This means we do not have an convincing evidence that the proportion, and this is just restating from number one, of contestants who believe going last is beneficial is greater than 0 0.083. Whoops. Not the letter zero, zero, eight, three. That's it. Yeah. So, first off, I don't know where the sector one came from. It was just 098. I don't know how I wrote 0918. It was just, that was from the beginning, 098, right up here. So, 098, I don't know where the sector one came from. But we always compare to the alpha. So, I don't know why I wrote that, the whole and the half. So this should be 0.05. It still ends up being greater than, but I don't know where my brain was. So what came from one minus one over two? Uh, yeah, uh, that was right. That was the right one. So that was, so I didn't make a mistake. I only made one mistake. So it's just that. Okay, I actually wrote down the whole and the half instead of the alpha. We always compare to the alpha, and that's where my mistake was. So. And yeah, the 0980 and 0918, that's kind of weird how it was close. 